Good morning. Welcome to the uh, County Commissioner's meeting of June 2nd. Uh, we will begin, as is customary, with the observance of a moment of silence. Please rise for the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Public comment? Yes. Not? Okay, thank you. Please uh, consider the minutes of the May 19th meeting. You need a motion? Motion to approve. Second the motion. Commissioner, you can unmute yourself if you can vote on that one. As a test, I just unmuted. Is that okay? Now you can mute me again. Thank you. Votes, votes on the table. Hold on. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm having trouble hearing the commissioners. I think we should just the motion. Please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Sally, good luck. Yes. I mean, welcome. Good morning to all you. We have a total cash of three million two hundred ninety thousand thirty-eight dollars and forty-four cents. We have receipts May thirty-first and June the first. $184,668.82. That brought us to a cash balance of $3,474,707.26. We had expenditures this week of $1,814,447.95. Our tax claim was $107,388.93. So that brings us to a balance of one million five hundred fifty-two thousand eight hundred seventy dollars and thirty-eight cents. Motion. Motion to approve. Second. Any comment or question? All in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Anything else, Sally? No. Nope. Not more than we can talk. We do have all the windows. We try to cover tables. We get our tax money and we'll have that done for the year. It will be good. We have to June is right about on time. Yeah. yeah I don't know if we have all of June covered because of the taxes coming. But I mean, to have the remainder. Yeah. That's good. Thank you, Sam. You're welcome. Michelle Savely, Director of Human Resources. Under personnel transactions, Blair Farrow, caseworker two, Children and Youth Services, resignation, effective June 10th. Emily Nichols, caseworker one, Children and Youth Services, resignation, effective June 9th. And Cassidy Kleinfelder, General Clerk C, Paconetary's Office, resignation, effective June 10th. Motion to approve those resignations. I'll second the motion. Oh, do you want a second, Joel? Go ahead. I, I was just waiting to vote. Any questions regarding the motion? If not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Tell me what's that motion. Motion. Under changes of SACs, transfers, and promotions, I have a motion to approve Lebanon County Correctional Facility Warden Tina, Warden Tina Litz's recommendation to increase the hours work per week for the following two positions within the LCCF. Captain and training director from 35 hours per week to 40 hours per week, effective May 29th, 2022. Motion to approve. I'll we'll second the motion. Questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 
of same science and Moving on to other transactions, the district attorney would like to hire Jack C. R. Kopp as a booking agent at the rate of $14.35 per hour, effective June 6th. Children and Youth Services would like to hire Amber Smith as a caseworker one at the rate of $1,227.25 by weekly, effective June 6th. President Judge Tilwalk would like to hire Storm Hauser as an office support two in domestic relations at the rate of $1,077.16 by weekly, effective June 13th. President Judge Tilwalk would like to hire the following two office support twos in domestic relations at the rate of $1,077.16 by weekly, both effective June 13th, and that is Sandy Rudigar and Mia Acasio. And President Judge Tilwalk would like to hire Alvaro Castro as a juvenile probation officer one at the rate of $1,678.09 per weekly, effective June 6th. I'll make a motion to approve the changes of status transfers and promotions. Second that. Any questions regarding these transactions? I would only point out, hopefully this continues, that there are twice as many hires as there are resignations. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. That's that's a really good transformation. Um, all in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Same sign, so moved. Aye. Moving on to salary board, if there are no questions regarding the transactions presented, is there a motion to adopt those transactions on the salary board? Um, with the motion approved, uh, second. She, she moved it. <laughs> second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Not all in favor of approving the salary board recommendations. If not, please say aye. 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 Both same sign. So aye. Uh, I mean, I, that was an aye in favor. So moved. All right. Thank you. Next. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Introduce yourself and then you may proceed. Good morning. I'm Holly Leahy, Administrator for Loving County Mental Health Intellectual Disabilities Early Intervention Program. I am here to present two different things this morning. Uh, so the first are um, provider contract amendments for fiscal year 2021-2022. We have nine provider contract amendments. <laughs> They're all for early intervention and intellectual disabilities, except there is one, mental health. The total is $95,887. All will be covered through our current allocated funds. So we are not seeking any additional county funds to support the amount, again, which is $95,887. Motion. Motion to approve. Second the motion. Discussion. All in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 The same sign, so moved. Okay. Thank you. The second item is for the uh, transitional home. We're calling it the cottage at 217 East Wideman Street in Wideman. Um, it's actually uh, on our property, our Mita DEI property. So it's right up by our building. Let me tell you a little bit about this project. For many years, there have been a need identified in Lebanon County for housing for individuals with serious mental illness that have a history of incarceration as landlords are hesitant to rent to this population. In August 2020, we began researching options for housing and identified the small unused cottage on our MHIDEI property as a potential home for this project. Over the past year and a half, we have worked diligently to further develop a plan and obtain approval to move forward. If I could tell you just a little bit about the home and the project. So Lebanon County MHIDEI receives state and federal funding to serve individuals with serious mental illness, intellectual disabilities, as well as developmental delays. 
Therefore, all of our funding must be used to serve this population. All individuals considered for this transitional housing would have a diagnosis of serious mental illness and or an intellectual disability. They may also have a history of substance abuse, but would not be considered for residency if actively using any substance. Additionally, we would not accept anyone that would pose a threat to the physical safety of others nor anyone on Megan's law. So there would be clear exclusionary criteria for this home that would include no individual will be accepted into the home with behavior that would cause the person to be a threat to the physical safety of others, nor any individual will be accepted into the home that is registered or required to register with the Pennsylvania State Police as a requirement of the Pennsylvania Megan's Law 2 or its successor law as amended. Any individual wishing to be considered for this home would go through an extensive vetting and referral process to ensure that they not only meet the diagnostic criteria of serious mental illness, but also that they would be a good candidate for the home, compatible with the other residents and safe for our community. This process will include a review of history, current behavior, and an interview with the individual. Although the individuals may be coming to live in the home after incarceration, the individuals will have served their sentence and free to live anywhere in the community. If it's not in its home, it will be somewhere in our community. Once thoroughly vetted and approved residency and the transitional home, each resident will be assigned a housing support case manager through the provider identified for this home. The housing support case manager will be checking in on each resident initially on a daily basis, both in person and by phone, and then lessening frequency as needed. This housing support case manager will be available by cell phone during the week and crisis intervention services available on weekends and holidays. In addition to a specified housing support case manager, each resident will receive individualized services and supports to assist with their diagnosis of serious mental illness and or intellectual disability. This will include medication management with our psychiatrist, blended case management, intellectual disability support coordination, certified peer support services, housing and activity center, home care, and many more. Referrals are made to additional services and supports as needed, identified, and applicable to the individual. All individuals must be capable of independent living skills. This means that they must be able to take care of themselves by making their own meals, keeping their space clean, and taking their medications as prescribed. There are also individualized services available that can assist in refining these skills if they have basic skills and need some assistance. Since the individuals are free to be in the community, there will be no security guard or security in the home. We have 10 high quality security cameras that surround our MHIDEA agency building that will be able to capture the outside activity of the transitional home. Since this home is literally in our agency backyard, there will be a very high level of monitoring and oversight. The home will have basic rules, including, but not limited to, no overnight guests, no drinking or drugs, no smoking in the home, and a curfew. These rules will be fully identified and refined as we develop the home. So as we go through this process, we'll further develop those. Potential residents will be required to sign an agreement and abide with all the rules in order to remain in the home a little bit about the home itself. It's transitional for three individuals um, and there will be no staff living in the home, uh, but we, as described, there will be lots of services and supports and oversight and monitoring. The home itself will allow for three locked bedrooms, so they will have their own locked bedroom space, but all the other areas will be common space shared between the three individuals so the living room, kitchen, bathroom, and outdoor space will all be shared. Um, it will be transitional. So I've mentioned that multiple times. That means that they will be able to live here from anywhere from six months to one year. This affords them the opportunity to receive the mental health services and supports in the community, begin to draw down monthly income, whether that be social security income or through a job, pay down any fines, and ultimately locate with or without our assistance, long-term housing. 
Um, they will need to apply for assistance and purchase their own groceries, personal hygiene items, clothing, <coughs> anything personal that they may need. The mental health funds would only pay for monthly utilities once the home is open. Um, the individual, once an individual moves out of the transitional home and into an alternative housing of their choice, we would take additional referrals and consider new applicants for the home. As we went through the process on April 20th of 2022, our Lebanon City Zoning Board approved the zoning of this home for this project as I just described. We then advertised to solicit bids from general contractors for the necessary home renovations. It's not um, very habitable at this time, so it really needs some renovations to bring it up to code and standards. On May 26, 2022, our purchasing agent, Danielle Emmerich, received and opened the bids. We received one bid from Woodland Contractors, a general contractor in Lebanon County, in the amount of $162,217. This morning, we are seeking approval from the county commissioners for Lebanon County MHIDEI to execute a contract with Woodland Contractors for the renovations of 217 East Wideland Street in the amount of $162,217. We have identified existing funds within our seat allocation for this project, so we are not requesting any additional county funds from the commissioners for this. Motion. 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 To approve the um, project at 217 East Wyman Street for $162,217 to Woodland Contractors. Second. Moved and seconded that we execute this contract. I just want to make uh, one mention on the bids. We did have interest from uh, approximately eight bidders that, that picked up plans and reviewed them, but ultimately it appears decided not to submit a bid. So it's a little unusual we have one, mm -hmm. but <clears throat> the process was was there. Uh, the specs were, were drawn up and distributed. It was advertised on pen bid, et cetera. So it just, it's just that we ended up with one bid. And that amount, 162,217, is right within uh, the expected ballpark, I'll say. And if, uh, for those of you, I think all of you were at the uh, hearing with the uh, zoning hearing board of the city, my estimate was that we would be spending between 150 and 200,000 on renovations to the home. That's right. right about where we are. Well, there is a local contractor, Woodland, plus all the subs look like they're local as well. Yes. Yeah, so that's Lebanon County. Um, yeah. um, one day, one day, one day. Any other discussion questions? It's a co-ed, I take it, for three people, it could be co-ed. Potentially. Um, although, again, you know, really looking at the individuals. So as we're vetting those referrals and looking at the individuals, we want to make sure that everyone's going to be safe. So possibly, um, you know, preferably, we'd like to start with, you know, um, just one or the other and, um, you know, and kind of go from there and see where it takes us. Will there be cameras in the home? I, I know you mentioned cameras outside the home. No, that's not legal. Not yeah, in the common cameras. areas? No. no, we would not have any cameras in the home. Any other questions? Not all in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Go to same sign, so moved. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good luck. See you. Thank you. Yeah, I think we can bring Aaron in. Away. There she is. <laughs> Go ahead. Morning, Erin. I'm Erin Moyer, and I'm the administrator for Children and Youth. And this morning, I'm here to present the Avanco contract for fiscal year 2023. Um, so, Avanco is the company um, who is in charge of our CAPS case management system. So, everything we do, all of our day to day work, is housed in this system. Um, the total amount of the contract for fiscal year 22-23 is $40,335.13. And I would ask that you approve this contract. Motion to approve. Second. And second, is there any uh, discussion? No. All in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Signed, so moved. Oh. 
Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Okay, and I have um, three items uh, remaining, and then uh, to the end of the agenda. The first is for uh, reappointment of uh, two members of the Board of Trustees for the uh, Clarence Shock Memorial Park and Governor Dick. Uh, they are uh, two incumbent members of that board, and they are David Eichler and Thomas Harlan, whose terms both expire uh, this month of this year. So I would ask your reappointment on those. Motion to approve. Second. The move in second is that we approve those reappointments, both well qualified and, um, and great volunteers out there. Um, aye. 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 Uh, based on their recommendation, they are requesting your reappointment of Michael Fry in the education category, Jennifer Easter in the optional category, Jennifer Shea as healthcare professional, Michael Weirich optional category, and William White optional category, all of whom would, uh, whose terms, whose terms ex would expire February 19th of 2025. Motion to approve those reappointments. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to accept those uh, drug and alcohol reappointments. Any questions, comments? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those same signs, so moved. And lastly, I have a request for exemption from real estate property taxes for qualified uh, disabled veterans or their spouses. This would be for four of them. I have David Christinger. Of Fortnersville Road, Jonestown, Alan Ditzler, Metro Drive, Lebanon, Javier Quinones, uh, Creekside Drive, Lebanon, and Gladys Ware, Palm City Park. And, uh, motion I'll make a motion to approve the veterans' 100% uh, disabled request for exemption from real estate tax. Second. Moved and seconded that we approve those four exemptions for tax uh, real estate tax. Disabled veterans, any questions, comments? Not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Or same sign, so moved. I, mean, I have this executive okay. session following for uh, union negotiations. Very good. Could we'll the, the commission stop over at the election board? Um, at the recount, because there are three ballots that need reviewed by a Republican. Uh, for uh, undervotes and a write-in, and one is a uh, double vote. Uh, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. Sorry for the delay in the start. That was uh, not planned, but. Uh,